Just, and it will be my only word in Polish uh, today, or tentative uh, to speak in Polish today. Uh, hello everyone, I'm Jean-Francois Gaudy, and uh, I'm in charge of innovation in, in Etam, in Etam that is a IT company. Uh, we are almost uh, 30,000 people in the world, and I have the chance uh, to uh, manage the innovation team that is a research plus innovation team in, uh, in, uh, in uh, our group that is uh, almost 150 people only doing research and putting it all together to do innovation products. And uh, I wanted to uh, talk about uh, digital innovation and to uh, present a little bit the kind of things that we are doing uh, with this team because it's a kind of putting it all together all the kind of uh, research and innovation things that we can uh, do uh, nowadays. Uh, and you will uh, see that maybe having it all mixing, uh, it can be uh, very interesting. So I took uh, one subject that was uh, about Alan Turing. I'm a very big fan of Alan Turing. And by the way, it's uh, funny because uh, uh, I read that two days ago, I guess, uh, 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 Mark Zuckerberg uh, decided to talk about uh, Alan Turing uh, also. Uh, so uh, I don't know uh, who uh, from uh, uh, Zuckerberg or me uh, took or had the, the idea the first, but uh, it's interesting that we are all uh, uh, thinking about him uh, those days. Alan Turing, uh, he was, uh, I guess, one of the fathers of the theoretical uh, computer science uh, that we are all using uh, today, and maybe you, uh, you knew him uh, uh, from school where in university we were learning about the machine, the Turing machine, this famous uh, Turing machine that uh, he invented uh, during the Second World War to uh, try to uh, get the code from the Enigma the Enigma that was, you know, the machine that the German people were using to encode uh, their messages, and so Turing created from the theoretical abstract that he had uh, during uh, this time, this uh, famous machine that was maybe one of the first computer. Um, it was very interesting also because uh, there is a book that is named The Enigma, I love this book, uh, that is telling the, the, the story of uh, Turing at, at this time. And uh, so he, he, he tells uh, how Turing uh, did uh, all his work uh, at this time. And also it uh, leads to uh, uh, a movie um, that was uh, done like uh, 10 years ago, something like that. Uh, and in fact, this movie was uh, named The Imi Imitation Game. The Imitation Game is uh, uh, referred to uh, an article that Turing published in uh, 1950. Uh, and it was not even in a scientific, uh, or it was a scientific uh, newspaper or paper, but it was in a psychologic and philosophy uh, paper. And it's interesting the, to see that even at this time, Turing was already thinking about the impact that artificial intelligence, because the imi imitation game is about artificial intelligence, would have on our society and uh, on, uh, on the people. Um, so in 1950, Turing uh, uh, said that he wanted to imagine, uh, to imagine a test that a uh, uh, computer would try, to, would try to fool human, having a conversation with uh, one human, and trying to, having, to, uh, to have the good answer to give to uh, uh, that people, uh, and to make people think that this computer could be uh, a human being uh, uh, behind. And so it was named uh, the imitation game or the test of Turing that you may have uh, heard about, uh, of course. And at this time, uh, of course, Turing was not imagining that uh, it could have been another way than having someone typing on a kind of keyboard and the computer would have answer with an uh, answer that you cannot know if uh, it's uh, uh, with uh, 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 that you would not have to uh, to get the voice or uh, any uh, other kind of uh, uh, media to uh, to exchange between the human and uh, the computer. 
And uh, so it was a text-only channel that uh, Turing was uh, suggested at, uh, at this time uh, to, uh, to, to, to render that. So, in fact, one of the game that we are imagining with uh, my team when we are working on the different subject that I'm going to talk with you uh, today uh, is can we create a new imitation game that will not be only uh, with text with, uh, and with the language, but that will be in a virtual world that, in fact, we will try to fool human by an avatar. Instead of having an avatar that will be piloted by a, a human people, by people, we, we would create a boat that is able to react with the avatar exactly as uh, you have in the supposedly metaverse uh, when uh, avatars are moving. So the question is, in the metaverse tomorrow, can we have an avatar that piloted by a boat that will be uh, good enough to make you think that it's a human that is uh, behind the, the scene. And you will see that uh, this exercise is uh, very complex because it's not only uh, talk uh, talking about language and, uh, and, um, and the, the, the understanding of language, but many other uh, subjects. Um, first of all, and I will not be the only one in, the, in this uh, two days to talk about uh, artificial intelligence. So here we come again with uh, artificial intelligence. Uh, and of course, we had a lot of progress in uh, artificial intelligence uh, recently and uh, in the past years. Um, we have immense uh, calculation uh, that can be realized behind uh, the neural networks, uh, of course, now. And you know that in, uh, in 2005, uh, there was some very important article uh, in the way that we can use GPU, for example, to make the calculation for, uh, uh, in AI, especially in co when it comes to computer vision, for example, and training of uh, uh, neural networks. So that the acceleration from this date is uh, just amazing. And I'm going to talk a little bit of, about artificial intelligence, but just to describe the way that we can use it in the famous Turing test that I'm uh, uh, speaking about. So first of all, the language, of course, this is one of the very important things that we need to address when it comes to uh, artificial intelligence, because first, this is one of the uh, biggest achievements uh, for the progress of, uh, of uh, our species. So when we want to accelerate with digital and artificial intelligence, it's a very important uh, uh, stuff. And we had a lot of progress in the language uh, algorithm during the past years. Uh, and we will talk a, a little bit about the different uh, usage that uh, we have uh, uh, in uh, the, the language. But uh, if you are familiar with transformers and the kind of algorithm that are named transformers, in fact, it changes a lot of things in the way that we can use neural networks to control the language understanding and the language processing. So one of the, the things that uh, we know uh, about uh, the language is, for example, the chatbot. So chatbot, you have many usage that you can uh, uh, create with chatbot. And the chatbot, of course, the interest of chatbot is to be able to understand the meaning and uh, the intention of uh, someone and to be able to reply to uh, the question of the, the, the people. And in the Turing test, it's, of course, something that is very important. But we uh, discovered uh, doing a platform with a chatbot that it's not uh, really uh, uh, easy those days to create one chatbot that is able to master all the subjects. Because in fact, uh, the more intention you have into a chatbot, and the more it's difficult to uh, control the intention. Plus, behind a chatbot, you need to have a team that is a chatbot trainer team, in fact, that is going to uh, give the answer, the good answer, imagine the good uh, questions that the people are going to ask to the, the chatbot. So it's, uh, it's quite difficult to have uh, a chatbot that will be able to handle everything. There is one thing that could lead to something like that, uh, one solution that could lead to something like that, is to create not one chatbot, but many chatbots. So you can have many bot trainers that are going to train the different chatbots and to create, like, let's call it a meta chatbot that will be able to scan the chatbots that are behind uh, the, the scene and to be able to 
uh, absorb the, 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 the content that uh, the, chat, the other chatbot have, so they can lead to a discussion to the correct chatbot, and even uh, in live mode to change chatbot when the people are uh, talking with them. So it's the, that kind of things that we are doing uh, now. It's working quite well, in fact, because uh, with uh, NLP uh, progress, we can do a lot of things uh, uh, with uh, that kind of uh, uh, things. And by the way, there is uh, something that is interesting here, is that when you have a meta chatbot, and you have a lot of chatbots behind the, this meta chatbot, we are running up to 400 chatbots huh, behind the meta chatbot. So it's uh, give you a little bit uh, the complexity that we can uh, face off. but. What is interesting is that every chatbot that you can have, because there are a lot of people that are doing chatbots, they all begin by, hello, how can I help you, blah, blah, blah. Those. So, of course, the meta chatbot has to uh, get the context and to know what the converse, where the conversation is already, at which point we are, so they can switch a part of the conversation from the different chatbots. And it gives you the illusion that there is one chatbot that is a, a unique chatbot. Uh, it's interesting and it's the first tool that we could use, in fact, for uh, the, the new Turing test. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about uh, this uh, uh, meta chatbot and uh, chatbot uh, things. In fact, uh, there is also something that uh, could be very interesting in that case. It's what we call the topic modeling. In fact, uh, uh, it's uh, how we can get the different topics from different uh, documents, for example, and you, get, uh, you do the reading of all uh, those topics and you are going to try to sort the document into uh, the number of topics that is relevant for this exercise. So, for example, you take like 1,000 topics, uh, documents, sorry, and at the end, the, the, the algorithm is going to say, okay, there is at least, uh, let's say, 30, uh, 35 topics, different topics in the, those texts, and the texts are going to be uh, uh, sorted in the, that different topics. Uh, here, what you see is uh, the kind of algorithm that we can uh, use to, uh, to do uh, that kind of things. Uh, in fact, it's read the, the, the text. We use transformers again here, uh, and uh, we are going to uh, uh, take the text as vectors. So the trans this is the, the job that the, the transformer is, uh, uh, that kind of algorithm are doing. And uh, you take the similarity between the vectors, so meaning that if two texts have uh, the same direction in the vectors, let's say, uh, so it will sort the different uh, text in the same kind of topics. And uh, in fact, it's learning by, uh, by itself. In the kind of uh, algorithm that we can uh, use uh, on, uh, on this, uh, and I give you uh, this because uh, it's uh, kind of interesting to read it uh, on, uh, on the internet, uh, we use uh, uh, LDA uh, algorithm and uh, another algorithm that is uh, named N. Uh, MF that is more uh, accurate, in fact, and more uh, um, rapid when it comes to reading the text and sorting uh, the text. But I encourage you to uh, have a, a read on the LDA algorithm. And by the way, if you can understand everything in that uh, algorithm, just give me a call because I'm very interested in uh, uh, working with you in that case. Uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's really very, very uh, uh, complex. And so here, what uh, you can see, it's using uh, neural networks, uh, of course. Uh, what you can see is that we took a text, and uh, <laughs> we took a text, this one, we took all this text, and we are moving a little bit uh, the, the accuracy that we have, we want to have in the number of words that we are going to study in the text, and then it's, the algorithm is going to sort all the text by topics. It's very interesting here because it's the earth of the NLP as well. When you want to have, uh, uh, when you give a new text to understand to, uh, to uh, the NLP, the NLP is trying to get the intention coming from that kind of uh, uh, algorithm. So it's uh, uh, very interesting, every f all the things that we can do uh, with that kind of uh, algorithm. Also, uh, there would be another thing that, uh, would, that is in interesting and uh, that we use a lot in chatbot uh, as well. This is the rephrasing, because we don't want, in fact, to, uh, uh, to redo 
all the time the same uh, sentences, and it has in fact two uh, in interests uh, uh, in um, in um, in a chatbot uh, usage. For example, uh, the first thing is that, and we can use it for many applications. The first thing is for the bot trainer. Uh, having a rephrasing uh, application is interesting because instead of asking to the bot trainer to try to guess all the way that the user is going to uh, to uh, to ask a question or to get uh, his intention, you can ask to a rephrasing uh, algorithm algorithm to uh, to to get the different uh, way of saying something. So uh, what you can imagine is, for example. Uh, having a sentence and you give it to a, an algorithm that is going to rephrase uh, that sentence. Here, for this example, because it's a, it's a real uh, example, we use it uh, quite a lot, we use a T5 algorithm that is a transformer, again, uh, and uh, with an encoder, a transformer, and a decoder, meaning that we take the first sentence, we encode it, we take the vectors, and we try to transform these vectors into many other vectors that we are then decoding to create new sentence from the first one. What is in that manner of uh, working, it means that we will have many sentences that are going to be generated by the transformer and the encoder. But it means also that some of these sentences may not be very uh, accurate, in fact. So we use also other algorithms that are going to uh, check if the sentence means something at the end, and if it's accurate and uh, means the same thing that the first sentence. Uh, plus, with this uh, T5 algorithm, I need to say as well that we are using some translation software, because you know sometimes when you take a sentence in a language, you translate it in another language, then back to the first one, you will not have the same results that uh, the first sentence, for sure. And we do it uh, when we uh, are training some model, we do it with uh, uh, transforming the first language in 60 different languages, using API uh, from uh, different vendors from the market, going back and using the T5 also to multiply the number of uh, sentences. So at the end, we can have like hundreds of sen different sentences that are automatically trained into the chatbot to understand one intention that we want to have. And it's quite efficient, in fact. So that was for the language part. But also, in the Turing test that we are uh, imagining, uh, we could as well have uh, some things like uh, behavior uh, analysis, and uh, that will mix a lot of different things. Of course, the language. So we could try to guess what is the behavior and the mindset of the user that is uh, asking something or uh, talking uh, behind uh, uh, the, the computer. Uh, but also uh, the, the, the video can give us uh, some uh, information. And talking about uh, the video, I have, of course, to talk about computer vision. And I know that, uh, by the way, we were talking about computer vision just the conference before. So um, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, computer vision and not uh, for one usage of the computer vision that I think uh, that is very interesting uh, those days. It's not for my Turing test, it's not only about uh, uh, the language. Of course, uh, we want to see uh, the people, and as we are going to be in a virtual uh, mod and a virtual uh, scene, I want to, uh, to have the best vision of the way that the people are moving in uh, the real life to reproduce it to uh, avatars. So, um, this is a test that we uh, did using uh, uh, Blaze Pools. So I don't know if you know uh, Blaze Pools, but uh, it's a, uh, a set of uh, API uh, from uh, Google, uh, and it's open source, so it's uh, it's uh, very useful. You can find some other uh, uh, API like that, like uh, Open Pools, for example, or Open Vino as well. That is interesting because Open Vino is working very well with uh, with uh, with a phone, for example. In that case, we take a phone, we use the camera of the phone, and we are trying to get all the movement of uh, the, the user. And then the movement uh, of the user is uh, uh, used to make the avatar move uh, at the same time. It's interesting to see that uh, nowadays, we the, the algorithm is uh, uh, and the, 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 
the neural network that is uh, behind uh, this, of course, is uh, accurate and, speed and fast enough that we have almost no latency between uh, uh, the capture and uh, the, 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 the avatar. Uh, and for us, it's uh, very interesting for many things. First of all, we can uh, use it in a virtual world to have not only the movement of the avatar being the head and the hands, because it's uh, one of the main problems that we have when we do a virtual reality, but to capture the full body. But also, remember that what I was saying at the very beginning is that I want to fool human people with an avatar. So I want to have an avatar that, is, that, is, that will move, that is controlled by a bot, but that will move as a, a human would do. So in fact, we can use that kind of things, doing a, a lot of capture, motion capture, in fact, of the people that are uh, training or moving in the, that kind of uh, metaverse, and uh, using it to reproduce uh, the movement into uh, an avatar that will be controlled by a bot. So this is what uh, we are uh, trying to do uh, right now. With the, the results are not that good uh, that we want, but uh, we know that we need to train it uh, a lot. And for sure, the data set will be uh, much more uh, efficient when it, uh, uh, with the time. So, of course, uh, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit uh, about, uh, uh, about uh, virtual reality. And uh, here we come with the virtual uh, world and uh, all the things that we can do with it. Of course, if uh, uh, Mark Zuckerberg uh, uh, from Meta was talking about uh, uh, the Turing test, uh, it's, uh, there is a reason. They are focusing a lot on, uh, on uh, virtual reality uh, those days, as you know. And by the way, the difference of what he said a few days ago uh, with uh, the Turing test that I'm proposing here uh, is not exactly the same. He's saying that Meta will create a headset that will be uh, powerful enough to have a super screen and super resolution, enough that you uh, can uh, uh, not recognize the difference between the reality and the virtual world that you would see into the headset. And so he's uh, calling it the vision Turing test, uh, which is not exactly what I'm proposing here, because here I'm proposing to have uh, this uh, kind of extension of uh, what Turing uh, uh, was proposing with uh, his uh, own test, uh, fooling uh, the human. And by the way, the metaverse, uh, if we talk about uh, the metaverse, I don't know if uh, uh, you have read a lot of definition uh, about the metaverse, and there are a lot on the, uh, uh, for the moment, but I would say that it's uh, still a concept that is under construction, and that is, uh, would be able to uh, uh, mix a multitude of collaborative virtual worlds, uh, and that would offer a virtual reality experience with all these different connected worlds, interco in fact, interconnected, which is for sure not the case for the moment, because for that, we should have the same protocol and the same kind of exchange between the different uh, worlds. So we are quite far from, uh, from this. And uh, of course, we have a lot of different uh, 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 worlds that exist uh, uh, those days. But most of the time, when we are talking about uh, metaverse uh, those days, we are much more talking about kind of a second life uh, extended, like uh, what you see here, than uh, an experience that is a real 3D experience that is uh, mixing a lot of different uh, technology. And it will come for sure, but a lot of people are playing on, uh, on the, the marketing uh, uh, part of the metaverse to, uh, to try to uh, sell that kind of uh, things. By the way, here, when you are on a computer and you are like only in 2D and you cannot bring it in 3D, it's not the same kind of experience. Because what we imagine, of course, would be to be more in a world that uh, you can be in a 3D experience even if you should be able, as well, to get back to uh, another kind of device. I mean, we should be able to go into the metaverse using any kind of device, and to have the device being 
adapted to uh, what the metaverse is proposing and uh, to propose a real 3D experience to the user. And when I'm coming uh, to the, the point of the 3D experience, it means that you can have interaction with the people that are uh, uh, with you, but you should have also interaction with the scene where you are as well. And I invite you to have a look on what the different metaverse supposedly metaverse proposed today, most of the time you have a, like a decorum, uh, a, a scene with a super deco uh, around you, and then you see uh, maybe other avatars, so other people that are in the same scene than you. You can talk with those people, so you can have interaction with those people, but you cannot have interaction with the rest of the, the scene by itself. And that is very complex. So we want to work on this uh, subject that is also uh, how can we uh, create a 3D scene that you can interact with the 3D scene uh, and be many people at the same time to interact with that 3D scene. So we imagine, uh, um, we imagine a, a protocol, in fact, that we name uh, UMI3D, and this protocol is able, in fact, to display a 3D scene to any kind of device any kind of device, and from this device to adapt the kind of interaction that you can have, like uh, the input uh, can be very uh, different from a phone and a tablet and a computer than from, a, of course, a, a headset with uh, handles and things like that. So it can be very different, and uh, if you want to have the multi-device approach, in that kind of concept, you need to uh, have a UX that is different from one device to another one. And to create it on a single uh, experience where you can mix many devices at the same time, you need to have a protocol that is going to handle that th this way. So now this consortium, in fact, uh, is uh, uh, welcoming a lot of uh, different actors from the market. So if you are interested by that kind of subject, of course, you are very welcome to, uh, to uh, reach us. But in, in fact, this is a protocol that we use to create many different experiences uh, 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 on different uh, kind of software. The first thing that we had to solve with that kind of uh, uh, protocol is uh, something that, uh, as developer, you know very well. Uh, it's the way that you are competing uh, with other users to manipulate a unique uh, resource. So if you have one resource uh, and uh, that many people can be uh, at the same time in the same scene using that resource, you have to use uh, the collaborative uh, kind of uh, uh, algorithm to uh, make it possible that when one user is uh, uh, manipulating one object, the other one is uh, will be in a comp uh, co uh, in, uh, in competition with the, the first one, uh, manipulating uh, this object. So it was the first ex kind of experience that we did, and it's very using UX or oriented as well, that kind of things. First, so that kind of things, the, the game uh, uh, designer, they know a little bit about this, because it can happen that in a game you have uh, this kind of uh, situation. And uh, most of the time it's encoded into the engine of the game, but the engine of the game is most of the time also not able to uh, uh, address multiple de devices at the same time. So uh, it's why we needed to have another protocol for that. So the first thing that we, we did using uh, this uh, protocol was to create a scene where two users are able to create uh, just, uh, just using uh, this protocol a different scene, uh, adding an uh, element in the scene by themselves uh, and uh, doing it uh, live. It's not, there is no coding here. You see that the guy, there is one guy with, uh, with the headset and he's putting like a uh, different element on a, on a table. They try, by the way, here to do a, a, a gameplay that is supposed to be a city. So they put a city and uh, the other one at the same time is designing the city as well, but using another kind of devices. So it was the first kind of uh, experience that we had to evaluate uh, the, the work that we did on this. And then after that, and uh, okay, to, to be honest, this, uh, this uh, scene is uh, uh, five, it's, it's come from like uh, five years ago, uh, something like that. And uh, the first time that uh, we did that, in, uh, it was, uh, we present the, the work uh, 
the research as a research work. It was in uh, in New York, and uh, we were presenting like uh, the marshmallow stuff like that. I was not very proud of uh, of this, and uh, because it's very uh, um, you know it was just to show the concept of what we were doing. But by the way, uh, five years later, now we are designing a software that uh, enable th that we call the sketcher. This one that enable us to create scene where we put a lot of 3D uh, objects inside. So here you can see a simulation of a factory. Uh, it's for one of our clients that is doing a, a chemical product, and so they wanted to do a simulation of their factory. We put every element of the factory. We take all the different uh, uh, 3D objects, and we can uh, uh, no code, in fact, put the different objects and uh, the, comp the, the, the behavior of uh, the, the object. Then we say uh, the logic of the physical of dif the different uh, objects. So you see that uh, here we are designing, in fact, how the different objects are going to interact, the one with the others, and what is going to happen when uh, the user is uh, doing that manipulation and so on. So we can create it, and here again, it's without code. And here you see the results. So again, this one was uh, like uh, two years ago, and I can tell you that now the rendering is not the same. Uh, but here you can see uh, the result. The user is manipulating the different uh, uh, places, like in the simulation of the factory, and you can see the, the little token that are moving uh, from the physical part that is trying to uh, to show exactly what is going to happen in the real life when it's a so it's it's a very interesting tool when it's uh, when it's uh, uh, you use it to, in fact to create simulation to do training uh, in VR for your user. By the way, uh, we are using it uh, as well in uh, in. Uh, building information uh, uh, modeling, for example, you know, like uh, you have data from a building, uh, we import the data from the building into uh, this uh, sketcher, and at runtime we can have many people at the same time that are visiting the building, but also doing change in the building. So, for example, we can have the electricity uh, plan and the water plan in the, in the building, and the people that are visiting the building can change uh, in runtime, uh, the, the 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 path of the electricity plan and so on, and it's uh, in a transactional way going to modify the plan in the in the beam uh, uh, data uh, uh, database that we we are using. So it's very interesting also uh, for real use case, business uh, use case than the like uh, the one that I'm uh, talking about here. So, but it, I'm only a bit uh, far now from uh, my Turing test, so I'm going back to uh, my Turing test. We're using this kind of things, we can have now that kind of uh, uh, visualization where the user are designing different uh, workshops, scene, uh, what some things that we call like uh, the gallery. So this is, you have people working together in uh, virtual reality, building a scene, and then able to use the scene to walk inside. So first part, they are collaborating together, and here, even in the scene that they are co collaborating together, they are able to manipulate some objects. So we are kind of far off the, the, the first metaverse that I was talking about, because here you can interact uh, with the scene and the object of the scene uh, together with the other uh, people the other avatars. So, of course, and uh, this is, uh, by the way, uh, one self-assessment assessment things, but it's part of a, a very big uh, um, a project that we are using for HR in, uh, in our company, for example, to do onboarding for, uh, for people. And we use it uh, a lot, for, but uh, always in group with people that are min manipulating and things like that. We also have, uh, by the way, uh, now a uh, design thinking session. And for me, the design thinking session uh, in that kind of uh, experience can be very interesting when it comes to manipulating for real 3D objects. Meaning that uh, all the things that uh, uh, are manipulating 2D objects into the 3D world is not interesting. Uh, I'll give you an example. You do... Uh, um, you do a, a design thinking session and you ask to uh, the, the, in a virtual reality and you ask to the participant to write something in the post-it and put it on a board. 
in that kind of uh, usage, I mean, you are not using uh, the, the advantage of having a, a 3D uh, world. You are just uh, taking the, the 2D world into the 3D, the 3D world. And having, it's like uh, the digital, co digital uh, campus, for example, uh, for, uh, for courses uh, at universities and so on. Uh, I, I'm wor uh, working uh, those days with a business school, and we are trying to create like uh, uh, courses in uh, virtual reality. What we don't want to have is uh, a teacher that would be as an avatar with a screen, with PPT on the screen, and the virtual student in the room uh, uh, just following the PPT uh, from, uh, from the virtual room. I mean, what for? Just give me a, a Teams and uh, the PPT and the, the real picture of my uh, of my uh, teacher, and it's it's okay. I don't need to have a virtual virtual world for that. But you will see on the market most of the time this is what we have, and it's not playing with the real experience, the real experience of the 3D, the real think, uh, the real desi the design thinking, for example, in uh, in 3D that we could imagine for the moment uh, would be to manipulate objects, to create new objects with that manipulation in 3D, and to test it in virtual reality before to test it in the, in the reality. That is interesting. So this is what we try to do uh, now. Uh, and also, of course, uh, the, we, we go to the first step, and now we are trying to put it all together, uh, meaning uh, having an avatar. I don't know. If I have sound, no, no, no sound. Okay. So in that case, in fact, uh, we have a, a, this avatar that is not moving for the moment. So we are working on this, uh, making the avatar move uh, uh, by itself, depending of what he's saying. So using all the data that we are collecting from the first part that I show you at the beginning. Uh, so making. Uh, the avatar move, and of course here uh, we are using speech to text. Um, then we pass it uh, to a chatbot that is understanding what the user is asking. The chatbot is answering, and we try to make the avatar move in that environment. That will lead us. We exp we 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 hope to uh, the the next uh, Turing test that I was proposing at the beginning. Uh, that to be in virtual reality, having an avatar that is able to understand you, to answer you, and to move as if it was uh, a, a real human behind the, the scene. So what are we, why are we doing uh, that kind of things? I'm not sure that I want to live in a world that uh, it will be uh, uh, tomorrow uh, such a disaster that I would like to be all the time in a, in a metaverse to talk with uh, maybe a boat without uh, knowing that it's a boat, uh, or to, uh, to have a better world that would be in virtual reality than uh, uh, the reality. But I think uh, if we say that we can achieve this uh, Turing uh, new test in virtual reality, we would have um, get a lot of different tools that can be useful for real uh, experience. Like, for example, uh, instead of uh, 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 modifying the world uh, by doing experience uh, in reality, let's do it in virtual. And if we see that it's not working that, that good, we are not destroying the planet. I prefer to do it first in virtual uh, than, uh, than doing uh, first in, uh, in real. That is uh, what we are trying to uh, achieve now. Thank you. It was the new uh, version of the Turing test. I think I have time for questions, if uh, you have some questions. Friday afternoon, one last question. How far do you think are we surpassing that test? Um, I think... Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, unfortunately, I think it's uh, less. Uh, it's it's more five years than fifty because uh, I'm saying unfor uh, unfortunately because I'm a little bit afraid of uh, what will be uh, after that. But uh, um, uh, you know, if you take if you take uh, all the natural language uh, processing, uh, like generating text, uh, understanding text, uh, 
the kind of uh, encoder transformer decoder that uh, uh, are working now, like all the mod the, the models that are coming from the BERT, uh, all that things, it's just amazing. You can read text and you can generate text that are so near from the reality that you don't even know if uh, if uh, it's a computer that wrote the text or or, or human uh, uh, real human. So. This language part is very, very accurate uh, now. Uh, the understanding of that intention maybe will take a little bit of uh, time, I guess. The movement of the, the, the avatar, I think we will go uh, very fast to, uh, to get it. The speech to text, you all know that, uh, I mean, I don't even know how my Google or my, my Alexa is uh, sometimes recognizing what I'm saying because uh, you can be, uh, you know, with the voice of uh, the morning uh, after a big, uh, a big fest, <laughs> the, the day before, or turn out the light, and, uh, and it's still working. I mean, uh, it's uh, just amazing. So I think uh, we are quite close uh, of doing that kind of things, yes. No, 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 no. The, that is more about the understanding and the understanding of the context. One of the very uh, difficult things that we have to solve here is the context of the conversation. And for example, when I was talking about the, the movement of the skeleton, this algorithm, the algorithm is, it's for example, to be able to uh, recognize something like, uh, what do you think of this? I mean, in the in the this kind of test, you can have something like the avatar saying, "What do you think of this?" And if the user is doing, "What do you think of this?" the the boot in front has to uh, uh, recognize the movement of the user and to understand that this is a bottle that uh, the user is designing with uh, is uh, showing with uh, his finger. So we have some uh, uh, challenge to uh, solve here, but it's, this one is very interesting. Yes? So there, there are other things, for example, uh, when I'm talking about uh, the language, um, most of the tests that we do with language uh, is, uh, are done with a, with a model that are trained in English. But it's not the same depending on the language. I'm not going to talk about Polish because I, I don't know uh, uh, the way that we can uh, uh, do it, but uh, we have been working on... Um, uh, three different uh, other languages, like French, uh, Portuguese, and Spanish. Uh, and uh, sometimes the, the, the model are very different, in fact. And you have to train it uh, with different kind of text. And the texts are very different. And uh, when it comes to uh, uh, getting the different tests, you can have very different results in the model that you are using, depending on the kind of text that you can uh, uh, make it uh, uh, that you can try to train the model, in fact. So uh, uh, that takes time also. Uh, so it depends on the language that you want to use. Uh, and the algorithm, uh, of course, uh, the, the, but it goes very fast to follow the algorithm. We are dev developing also some algorithms. So we are participating to this work of publishing, you know, uh, uh, of the different results that we, we can have. But a lot of people are working at the same time on different subjects. And it's, uh, it's moving uh, very fast. I don't, to be honest, I don't know, uh, uh, to, to come back to uh, the question five years or 50 years, uh, on this matter, uh, what is going to, uh, to happen. When it comes to the hardware, the hardware is, uh, being, is uh, developing very uh, uh, fast as well. I guess I'm waiting, uh, like everyone, for the new uh, devices uh, from uh, Facebook, I mean, Meta, sorry, uh, from uh, uh, maybe, uh, uh, I guess, Google, Apple for sure. Uh, even if Apple, I guess, will go a little bit more to uh, AR than uh, to VR uh, in the first time. Maybe the, the device are going to, uh, to mix at a time. 
the AR and uh, VR uh, devices, so uh, the, the hardware fo will follow. There is one thing that is uh, very interesting for the future, is the, 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 the haptic part. You know, the, the feeling that you can have from the return of forces and things like that uh, using, a, using a virtual reality. Meaning that in all the examples that I show you, uh, where the people are turning some things and so on, you, you need to have a return of force to feel uh, what you are doing. Uh, I'm working with, um, with uh, an hospital right now to simulate uh, uh, surgery uh, uh, operations, like uh, having a, a team of 10 people doing a, a complex procedure in surgery, for example. So it's very interesting because they can train the procedure before to do the real uh, operation, which is very uh, interesting for them. We do a simulation of the, the uh, operation room, and we put all the different objects into this uh, simulation room. So they have to, some of them have to take something, give it to the other one, the other one is going to use it, and, uh, and so on. So we want to train them to have all the, the good uh, uh, move and uh, the, to, to have this procedure. But in fact, it would be much more efficient if you can feel the weight of the different tools that you are using, for example, if you can feel the sensation that you have using the tool and so on. So that will be, uh, I mean, in the future. And we are already working with some startups that are doing designing uh, devices to have the, all these haptic um, uh, devices. But uh, it's, uh, it's, this one is a is challenge, uh, still a challenge, yeah. I <laughs> okay, that is more in 50 years, I guess. <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, but it's a very interesting question because uh, we were thinking about what would be if, if we can do this uh, Turing test uh, in virtual reality with avatars, what, what will be the next step? And for sure, the next step will be to have, a, I guess, a robot, like a, I, I think uh, you can refer to uh, all the, the movies that uh, exist uh, about this, a robot that will be uh, able to uh, fool a uh, human in uh, making things that are uh, there. So th I think this is the next step. I have a part of my team for a while that have been working on, uh, you know, the, the paper robot, which is quite far from being like a human. You know this little uh, white uh, uh, robot, but it's very interesting because we had to uh, to uh, manage the different movement of the robot depending of what the robot was saying. So we are al we were already in fact in the the kind of things that we are doing with the avatars, and we were using the same same kind of things. But to make it uh, like real with a, a robot, I think uh, yes, we are going to uh, to wait a little bit. The next, the next uh, Turing test, the next, next uh, Turing test. Then I think you're right. <laughs> I think you're right. But the, the, the question is to know how we are going to train the boat. In fact, we have two ways to train the boat. You take, uh, you take like, uh, um, I would say, a, a procedure and a sequence of things that the boat will answer all the time. So it's uh, always supposedly uh, uh, right. Or you can uh, train the boat using uh, the real uh, conversation or things like that that we already know how to do it, and you all remember about this uh, chatbot from Microsoft that uh, was, yeah, you, you, you remember that, but it was using that kind of uh, algorithm, in fact. It was a transformer behind uh, the scene uh, that was uh, uh, learning from the different people, and it works very well, by the way, very well. So in the, the, in the case of uh, doing the Turing test, 
uh, maybe it could be a solution. But we know that most of the people in chat in chatbot they don't want to use that. And uh, by the way, uh, to be honest, myself, I hate having a chatbot. That I don't know if it's a it's a chatbot or if it's a, or if it is a, someone that is real. I like a chatbot to say hello. I'm a chatbot. I'm not human because I don't want to to be in a position to pass the Turing test each time that I'm connecting to my uh, web. So uh, <laughs> thank you very much. Have a very good weekend. <laughs>